Dr. Dan always gets the biggest smile from me because I know we're going to talk about something that's going to bend and warp our minds, and this one is going to blow your mind. So the comet Bernard Danelli Bernstein that was discovered by those two astronomers has now grabbed the headlines once again as the biggest one to be discovered to date. I love new discoveries. Get this, measuring 137 kilometers in width. This comet is uh, some 15 times taller than Mount Everest and has now outsized the Halley Bopp comet, which was discovered back in 95 and measured 74 kilometers. And while it was first discovered in 2040, new research has now revealed uh, that it is much larger than anyone first thought. And joining us via Zoom to chat about this really cool discovery is our science engagement astronomer, Dr. Daniel Kanema. I know I, I always force you to dumb things down for me, dude. The first question <laughs> I have to ask is, is this comet anywhere near Earth? No, uh, okay. but more morning, Percy. Um, <laughs> th this, one's, this one's not going to come close at all, so it's not even going to get into the, the inner solar system. Um, inner solar system, we mean, you know, closer than Jupiter. Uh, so it actually won't even be visible to us uh, at its closest approach in, in a few years' time, even. So <laughs> even though it's so big, we're not going to get a spectacular show from this one. Well, we've uh, seen enough of it now to know... Risk that it is obviously the biggest of its kind. But can you give us the official classification of what a comet actually is? So uh, for a minor planet, a uh, minor planet is something which, you know, the gravity and the pressure of, of the rock uh, is in equilibrium. It, it pulls itself into a circle, and that generally happens about 400 kilometers across. Okay. Uh, so th this is this is below a minor planet, um, and below that we're talking about asteroids, uh, which are just uh, rocky bodies. And then comets are something different because they're a, a mixture of us and uh, and rock. Uh, and that ice is, is not necessarily water ice, although it can be. Generally, it's carbon dioxide ice, so dry ice, if you will. Wow. Um, if you've encountered dry ice before, and most of us probably have, yeah. uh, that's what a, a large part of the, the comet is made up of. And then the tail that we see from a comet is this uh, carbon dioxide ice uh, what they call sublimating, so it goes directly from a uh, solid to a gas. Wow. Okay. Well, that being said, it, it would seem then that when tracking a comet size, it might be quite tricky. So how do scientists and astronomers actually go about measuring the size of a comet? Yeah, so there's a few things you can do. The, the, the obvious one is, and what we do with asteroids, is just to look at its brightness. Uh, and by looking at its brightness and we know how far away it is, you can estimate uh, a roughly, you know, a, sort of within 10 or 20 percent its its size uh, and there's a simple formula for that uh, with the comet as you said it's slightly more difficult because it's got a fuzzy tail it's, it's more of a fuzzy blob than a, than a clear object but again we can look at its, its uh, rotation so over time uh, it's it's spinning through space and we can see how that's changing we can often get sort of measurements of its its motion like that and, and estimate the, the gravitational forces it's, it's undergoing. And I would imagine with this big guy, there are some major forces that are happening in that space. So um, as I understand it, our researchers have let me know that the comet originated from the Oort cloud at the edge of the solar system, which has basically been in a deep freeze for about a billion years. Uh, what can we learn about our solar system by studying this particular comet? Why is it so special? Yeah, so the Oort cloud is, is uh, really, really far out, so beyond Neptune and the outside of our solar system. And the, the, it's full of these rocks and comets, which are remnants of the very early solar system. Uh, most of them have not really interacted with anything, uh, you know, any of the, the planets. Uh, Jupiter, all of that has, has swept up all of the, the inner rocks within our solar system, and then they get kind of molded into a planet and we lose all of the information of the early solar system uh, whereas these objects and we won't be we won't be visiting this comet but we are planning to visit some other comets with uh, um, satellites and, and other landers uh, we can look at basically a snapshot of what the solar system was like when it formed uh, and that's why these things are so interesting 
Oh man, and it's big, man. It's just crazy big, and I would imagine moving at a ridiculous speed, and it would, yes, destroy the Earth if it was anywhere near us, but it's <laughs> not, so we are safe. Dr. Dan, thank you so much. I love it when we come across these new discoveries in science in this infinite universe. Absolutely beautiful. So enjoy chewing on the gristle of that one for a while. Thank you so much, Dr. Dan. Always great to have you with us, man. Always a pleasure. Well, luckily, the comet won't come any closer than Saturn and won't likely be visible to the unaided eye, but astronomers will definitely be keeping a close watch on this one as it's turning out to be rather an extraordinary outer body object. Awesome.